Welcome back to Face the Nation. We go now to Russia's ambassador to the United States, Anatoly Antonov. Good morning to you, Ambassador, and thank you for coming on the program. Good morning. Thank you very much for inviting. I'll get right to it. President Biden says that President Putin has decided to invade Ukraine. Is he correct? Uh, you say that it's very difficult to correct your president. I don't want to be involved in any discussions in your country. I just would like to express our position. If you don't mind, I will start from basic things. There is no innovation and there is no such plans. It was fixed in Russian documents that we conveyed to our American friends in the State Department. Russia has publicly decided, uh, declared its uh, readiness to continue the diplomatic efforts to resolve all outstanding issues. By the way, I would like to say a few things. Uh, each state has a right to protect its boundary and border. The Russian Federation, the United States, as well as any state has such a right. It's no uh, uh, exception. Russian troops are on a sovereign Russian uh, territory. We don't threaten anyone. Why, uh, do, you, uh, why uh, do other countries try to impose uh, their decisions on us? Where can we deploy our troops and how many? I would like to emphasize once again that uh, this is our own territory. Can you even imagine that Russia will impose on the United States not to deploy your forces in Florida or in San Francisco? Uh, respectfully, Whether... Ambassador, you have troops in Belarus, which is a not technically Russian territory. You have troops in Moldova. You have uh, separatists you are funding and supporting in the east of Ukraine. This is not your territory. Yes, when we are talking about Belarus, I hope that there will be an opportunity for us to discuss it. We will discuss uh, joint drills that are undergoing. They were supposed to end like today. To are those troops staying in Belarus indefinitely? Uh, you see that uh, as to uh, United States, you have so many military bases uh, in uh, various uh, countries. As to us, we have just only a few. And we can't see any contradiction to any legally binding norms uh, on this issue. It looks like intimidation. You have over 190,000 personnel in and around Ukraine. You've got it surrounded on three borders. Uh, your words and your actions don't seem to match, sir. Uh, again and again, I would like to say to you that we have our legitimate right to have our troops where we want on Russian territory, on Russian territory. And uh, I would like to say to you that uh, we are not uh, threatened to anybody. We are not threatened to United States. We are not threatened to uh, Ukraine. It's very easy to solve uh, this uh, crisis if uh, you persuade uh, Kyiv to sit at the table of negotiations with Lugansk and Donbas people. So there will be no fighting. There will be peace. There no, will uh, be any casualties. It's so easy. But as to us, as to Russian Federation, we have a grave concern regarding uh, activities of North Atlantic uh, Treaty Organization. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say you that forces of uh, this bloc uh, uh, have, uh, came, uh, have come to Russian boundary. Uh, the, Sir, this, Moscow supports this, uh, the pro-Russian separatists in the east of the country. That's what you're referring to there when you talk about Donetsk. Um, President Zelensky says he wants to meet with President Putin. If you're interested in diplomacy, why doesn't that meeting happen? Uh, you say that uh, you don't want to listen to what I try to explain you. Uh, you don't want to listen to Russian concern regarding uh, security issues. It's not honest, because even... Uh, I'll take one proverb from American uh, friends that each coin has two sides. Why you are looking just only on one side? Why you prefer to ignore the second one? Why you are ignoring uh, Russian concerns on security? Today, the problem is not Ukraine. The problem is 
what kind of world order will be in the future, uh, whether we uh, can together uh, establish a firm uh, security guarantee for everybody without undercutting very important principle of indivisible security for everybody. Yep. It means that you have no right to strengthen your security at the expense of uh, Russian Federation. And we also have no such right. It's M clear. Mr. Such Ambassador, so Mr. Ambassador, was confirmed in many documents. Okay, you didn't answer the question by about United States and Russia. You didn't answer the question about President Putin and President Zelensky meeting. But moving on, you personally, before you were a diplomat, you were a top military officer, and in fact, you were given a medal of honor for your work uh, trying to return the Crimea. Uh, you've been under sanctions in the EU and Canada for your role in those operations. Is the big goal here for Russia ultimately to get the rest of the world to recognize Crimea as part of Russia? Is that what this is all about? Uh, an issue of Crimea is uh, solved. An issue of Crimea uh, is closed for us. It's a Russian territory. And we don't want uh, even to discuss this issue at all. It was not, uh, um, how to say, military operation by Russian uh, forces. Uh, it was a decision by people who live in uh, Crimea, it's clear. That's why I can't understand why we are talking now about Crimea. We have to deal with the situation in Europe. It's very important. Are For the you... United States, it's very easy to stop such crisis. You have to persuade uh, Kiev to fulfill Minsk agreement. That's all. Okay, so they for will you, sit at the when, table. When you, for our, our listeners, when you're talking about the Minsk agreement, you are talking about uh, agreements in regard to the east of Ukraine where there has been fighting for the past eight years. Is Russia ultimately trying to get the rest of the world to give that portion of Ukraine over to the Russian Federation? Is that what you're trying to do here? We are not uh, trying to uh, take any territory of uh, foreign countries. I would like to confirm that Donbass and Lugansk is a part of Ukraine. What we want, we don't want uh, to see irritants uh, along the perimeters of uh, Russian territory. We are interested to have a stable, good relations with Ukraine. And what we want, we would like to give an opportunity for peoples who are living in Lugansk and Donbass to speak their native uh, language, uh, to use uh, all uh, rights of uh, uh, any uh, society uh, that uh, we can enjoy. That's all what we want. Why don't you use the legal mechanisms to do that then, instead of funding separatists? There is excellent legal mechanism that was discussed by our two presidents in Geneva. And Mr. Biden has confirmed that Minsk agreements are valid and it's necessary now to implement Minsk agreement. I would like to uh, re uh, refresh your memory saying that uh, Russia is not a party of Minsk uh, agreement. Uh, uh, parties of these conflicts are Kiev, Lugansk and Donbass. Right. It is and Russian separatists in, uh, that, that in, Russia in, supports. Uh, Minsk agreement that it's necessary for them to start real work. And if you look at uh, all provisions in Minsk agreement, you will see what uh, everybody has to do. Mm -hmm. Do you think your policy right now is effective given that the reaction to Russia's military buildup has been for NATO and the United States to just pour more money and more weapons into the area? Isn't that the exact opposite of what you say you're trying to do? Uh, you see that uh, we are very much concerned what United States uh, and other NATO countries are doing. Uh, they are pumping off uh, Ukraine with a lot of weapons. There are, uh, by the way, um, agreements, politically binding agreements between United States and Russia, uh, which we uh, got in uh, the format of OECE as well as so-called Vasina arrangement. Understand, but, but respectfully, Ambassador, your country has the largest you that, military you that, you build You don't up. want to listen to me. You don't want even to, uh, to give me opportunity no, to I, explain I, Russian position. I do. How I just you want you to answer understand. the question I'm asking. You have the largest military buildup in Europe since the end of World War II. How do you expect NATO to react? 
uh, you see that we did a lot of to withdraw our troops from various regions that are very close to Baltic states, uh, to uh, Eastern European states. We uh, withdraw a lot of troops from Kaliningrad uh, area, and nobody even uh, said us uh, thank you. At the same time, we uh, see five ways uh, of uh, expansion of NATO. Uh, NATO has started uh, exploration, tech, military technical exploration of Ukraine now. It's not possible for us to swallow. You said that there is no space for us to retreat. There is just only a Russian Federation. Well, you know now that see... President Biden has said Ukraine won't join NATO in the new, near future. And the German chancellor said it's absurd for there to be a war because Ukraine's membership in NATO isn't going to be allowed anytime soon. So why aren't statements like that good enough? That, uh, Ms. Brennan, we heard a lot of uh, uh, words about it. And we would like to put everything on the paper. We would like to see legally binding uh, guarantees for Russian security. So we send our package of proposals, what should we do? We don't want to see next wave of expansion of NATO. Mm -hmm. We would like uh, you not to use uh, Eastern and uh, Central European uh, countries, as well as Baltic states, to deploy their new weapons. We don't want INF uh, missiles deployed uh, in Europe. Okay. And we have proposed you to deal with this issue, to sit together and to find solution. Again, today we are not talking about uh, Ukraine. We are looking about the order that uh, we will establish together in Europe and in the world as well. Why don't you want to listen our concerns in this uh, respect? Well, President Biden says his Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, will meet with your top diplomat, Sergei Lavrov, this week, but only if there is no military action or invasion. Can you guarantee there will be no military action or invasion? I just started my dialogue with you from words that we send in written form to State Department. And I would like to confirm again that there is no invasion now. As you know, there was a lot of fake news in mass media in um, many American channels that today we will start invasion. And I would like to confirm there is no any plan to start war. We don't want uh, war. Don't forget that during the Second World War, we lost 27 million. Yes. Do you know how many, how many uh, Americans died during the Second World War? Half a million. We were brothers in uh, arms. We fought together. So why shouldn't we uh, try to exactly. find solutions? Exactly. And, and that is why the question of having the largest military buildup by your military since the World War, the Second World War, has raised so many eyebrows. You have the largest nuclear forces in the world. You have hypersonic missiles. Why are you so threatened by a defensive alliance in a country like Ukraine? Uh, we have concern not about Ukraine. We have concern uh, regarding activities of NATO. It's a defensive we alliance. We see how NATO is not... No, come on. It's not a defensive alliance. Uh, you see that uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization is not peace-loving uh, NGO. It's political military uh, machinery or bloc. And... Uh, I remember my meetings in Brussels. Many times uh, your ambassadors uh, tried to persuade me that Russia is not an enemy of uh, United States or, or NATO. Uh, and the main threat is coming from southern part of Europe. I said, come on, uh, I understand your concern regarding Iran or other countries, but why your machinery is coming to my boundary? Mm -hmm. It's not fair. You see that, and we would like to stop such expansion. We would like United States to withdraw their troops and their uh, weaponry from uh, those states because it's our life. It's our guarantees of security for our people. We don't want to see military machinery uh, deployed uh, along the boundary with the Russian Federation. Let's discuss it, let's solve it. You see that you mentioned that Russia is a major a nuclear power. I would like to say the same that United States as Ru and Russia are key 
place in the world. We are permanent members of Security Council. Mm -hmm. We bear special responsibility for peace. We have yes. a lot of problems to discuss. Pandemia, uh, terrorism, uh, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and other yes. things. We can work together. We offer you. Mr. Ambassador. We send you a package of proposals. And we will watch that diplomacy in the coming days. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming and answering questions this morning. We'll be right back.